Establishing with shape in 1972, Australian and Chinese relationships are based on economics, trade, and have a well established community. Recent years have been strained due to concerns of Chinese political influence in Australia, who call for an independent inquiry into the origins of the COVID 19 pandemic, which led to a wave of trade restrictions stopping. Former ministers Malcolm Turnbull and Kevin Rudd spoke in a recent live broadcast for La Trobe Asia regarding China's belligerent relationship with Australia as tensions continue to rise. According to Lowy Institute polling last year, 94% of Australians uh, want the government to reduce its economic dependence on China. So the big World leaders have previously criticised China on their Communist Party policies and their human rights violations. However, Australia has hoped to improve its current tensions with China. One of the challenging circumstances for Australia was the international education that shrunk since borders closed. Last January, the government announced that they will offer a visa-free refund to international students to fill the COVID workers shortage. What we're doing is we will be rebating the visa application fees uh, from all those who arrive today, today and going forward for students over the next eight weeks and that is a fee of some $630 uh, um, and there are around 150,000 students who have visas uh, who we are encouraging to come back to be there for the start of their uh, university or, or college year and uh, that is a, a thank you to them for coming back and continuing to choose Australia but we also want them to come here and be able to be filling some of these critical workforce shortages, particularly those who are working and being trained in healthcare, and aged care, those types of sectors. Um, that will be incredibly helpful. Since borders opened in mid-December 2021, Australia has seen an increase in the numbers of students from India and Nepal the most. By comparison, Chinese international students have not returned to Australia as quickly. We spoke to Peter Hurley from the Mitchell Institute who has the facts. I think it's going to take some time for those numbers to, with which you know to come back to previous you know pre-pandemic levels. I think I think it, it, the reason why it's taking some time is it's easy to forget just how much of a shock happened um, over the past two years. Borders were closed. It was extremely difficult for international students or anyone for that matter to get across borders, and it's going to take some time for that for those effects to kind of work their way through the system. He went on how Chinese international students are returning at a slower pace since borders open and how the Australian labour market affects their return. There has been an increase in the number of international students. So um, there were about um, 250,000 international students in December last year inside Australia, and that's gone up by about 80,000 since borders largely opened in mid-December. Um, but to give you an idea of the size of it. I mean, there were about 600,000 international students in Australia before the pandemic, so there's still a huge decline. We asked Chinese international students on their perspective about this change, and here's what they had to say. My course is very practical, so many face-to-face -face classes is very necessary, so if I didn't back, in, back here in 2020, I think I might probably I will stay in China and study another course or something. Yeah, definitely it's harder for international students because our tuition fee is already very high and also the daily living, those costs are very high as well compared to China. Um, yeah, it's quite hard. Alyssa <laughs> well, Sabele, reporting for the news are plenty.